<clears throat> Hello, everybody. I'm Harry Dimitropoulos, and I want to welcome you to, uh, in this second training for uh, RFOs for the National Open Access Monitor in Ireland. Um, the Our talk today will be, uh, let me show you an overview. Uh, so uh, some uh, general overview about the, the Irish Monitor. Uh, then uh, a few words about the open air graph and the data quality that feeds the monitor, the linking functionality, uh, specific information for uh, research funding or, or organizations, and some information about uh, primary dashboard managers, what's the extra things they can do with their monitor, and next steps. So as you already know, the National Open Access Monitor is comprised of five dashboards. This dashboard for researchers, for research performing organizations, national dashboard, of course, that's uh, the, 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 high, the one that uh, incorporates everything, research funding organizations and institutional repositories. And here we'll focus more on the research funding organizations. There was a training a few weeks ago on research performing organizations. So some of the things, uh, if you attended that one, might uh, I might repeat some things that Leonidas repeated in the last uh, meeting, uh, but some of you might be here for the first or the second time, depending if you uh, were here in the first training. So some things, uh, bear with me if I repeat a few things, and please feel free to interrupt at any stage, uh, although we'll have a, a Q&A session at the end. So uh, the purpose of having the RFOs, uh, the RFO dashboards is so that uh, you as a funder can benchmark against your peers, uh, assess your open access compliance, uh, monitor your research impact and uh, shape your strategic ag agendas. And this is done by th three, by different views that the monitor provides uh to give you comprehensive insights into your activities and open science performance so the one uh, the first view is the indicators view which i'll show you later in the, in the demo uh, which highlights the open access update in indicators and enables the cross uh, rfo benchmarking so you will see things like uh, these graphs and indicators with numbers and different sections uh for uh, different uh indicators. And the one on cross RFO is where you can uh, um, check how you're performing compared to other RFOs. There is also the research outputs view, uh, which is a way of browsing the, the products, the publications that feed uh, your dashboard. So it, it uh, provides advanced searching and filtering. Again, I will show that uh, in the demo. Uh, Specifically, RFO managers have also access to the sandbox, uh, which is uh, a place where they can verify the data quality and check any new metrics or indicators that we produce or any graph updates are all are first tested or shown in the sandbox. And then uh, once approved, they, they appear in the, in the final in the production um, monitor. So a few words about the open air graph and the data quality. Uh, I repeated that in the first um, mentioned uh, about the graph in the first training. Uh, so I'll, I'll go a bit quicker here. Uh, so the open air graph is the data backbone behind uh, the data that the monitor shows. Uh, it's a scientific knowledge uh, graph that uh, takes input from 131,000 uh, uh, data sources, 3.5 million projects, and 250 in seven almost uh, million research outputs, which is not only publications, but includes software data sets and other research products. Although the monitor uh, for Ireland is uh, focusing on the publications and the statistics uh, and the indicators for, for those at the moment. Um, the, this is the pipeline uh, of uh, how things are produced. So on the left, uh, we can see all the data sources, uh, could be repositories, open access journals, the aggregators, different CRIS systems, publishers, registers, everything that feeds into the open air graph. Uh, repositories also go through our provide platform uh, where they can uh, make sure they're uh, following the open air guidelines through the metadata validator and can enhance their metadata via the open air broker. So all these, this information is aggregated. 
Then the next step is uh, enrichment by uh, mining. Uh, uh, full texts of publications are uh, scanned for to produce links to funding, data set software, bioentities, and other things, um, which are also added in the graph. Then is the a step step of deduplication because we get we have so many sources, uh, we're bound to get the same publication from different repositories. So we make sure these are uh, merged into one entity. However, we keep all the uh, the provenance or the, all the information of from the, the different duplicates. So none of the information is lost. Then there's another step of enrichment by inference, which is uh, mining on the graph on, on the links, producing further information from the uh, from the graph. And a final stage where everything is harmonized and released uh, as a public graph data set. And, it, and there's an API to access the information of the open air graph. This is what feeds the, uh, the National Open Access Monitor uh, Ireland. And uh, from where also we can get your feedback in order to improve this process. Uh, one example of feedback is links. You can link publications that have not been linked to uh, your funding uh, institution, for example, or uh, you might uh, see something that is missing and we might have to uh, make sure that uh, uh, our repository uh, is, is, um, has joined uh, provide and that the, the picture is complete. So this is a continuous uh, process that keeps uh, improving as we go along. <clears throat> now, this is the architectural view of the, of the process. This is the open air graph and the five dashboards, the users coming in. There is the open orgs uh, um, platform for disambiguating, disambiguating organizations. Uh, <clears throat> There is uh, there will be a, a, a webinar a training for, for for this provided. Uh, here is the the provide open air provide platform where the uh, repositories register and validate their data. But specifically for funders, there is another source that the open air uh, ideally would like to have is the the funding data, and I'll explain this on in the further slides. So the information about the the projects uh, for for each funder. So just a quick view of the sources contributing to the graph. Uh, there's, uh, as we said, there's a variety of sources uh, from thematic and institutional repositories like Archive and PubMeds and Odo, um, aggregators like uh, BOAJ, um, graphs like open citations, software tools, and software sources like uh, Software Her Heritage, Elixir, Publishers, Springer, Plus, Frontiers. Uh, many European and international funders um, uh, and more registered and other research infrastructure sources. So uh, all this information uh, needs to be checked for quality. So there's the deduplication that I mentioned before. Uh, so we merge the duplicate records of the same scholarly work, but keep all the information from where they came from. The, there's the enrichment through the text and data mining so affiliation, citation, and concept uh, extraction. Uh, and on top, document classification with fields of science or uh, and sustainable development goals. Um, there's also a similarity assessment. There's a independent continuous aggregation process that uses vocabularies to harmonize the diverse data sources. So this is for cleaning to ensure consistent and accurate biographic, uh, bibliographic records. And there is also a disambiguation for journals, publishers, and licenses because they also can come uh, under different uh, names. There's more information can be found on the uh, graph um, website, which I'll also show you how to access via the, your monitor. Um, okay, so uh, there's additional things that can be done for data quality uh, from uh, the users of the platform. So all users can, uh, can take advantage of the linking functionality, which I'll talk about in a minute. And uh, specifically, RFOs can provide the funding data uh, because if we have the funding metadata, then we could provide, uh, create a custom text mining to improve the coverage of the uh, publications and the products the monitor covers. Again, these will be described in detail in a minute. So let's start first for the, uh, from the linking. So with your, in, with your, with multiple ways, you can log in 
into your into the monitor and access the linking functionality. Let me show you where it is. And so this is the the home page of the monitor. So if you go in your uh, account, you will see the there is a a link button from where you can you can use the linking functionality. You can either search for for, for specific products. I don't know, searching for something by me and uh, didn't find it, but let me try something. Oops, add also my, okay. So um, for example, I want this, this uh, publication. So I select this one and go to the next step where I want to link it to a specific uh, projects. Uh, for example, and then I can go and confirm uh, this link. Um, additionally, let me go back uh, this way. I can also um, I, I'm also able to uh, upload. I'm sorry, upload a DOI CSV file. So if I have many things to link, you can unload a DOI um, file with DOIs. So these will be entered there, and can, I can link them in bulk. Um, okay, and what happens when I link? Uh, the links uh, show up in the next open uh, 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 graph update. So this uh, happens monthly. So um, if there has been an update a few weeks ago, I might be lucky and see it in a couple of weeks. If the uh, the graph had up updated um, just recently, it might take uh, more than it might take a month or more. Um, so. This is something to be aware that you won't immediately see your uh, links. However, if you go to your account and see my links, you will see, oops, I have to sign in. Uh, uh, okay. I have to enter with my other account, but let's see. Let me log out and enter correctly. Okay. Oops. <laughs> no. It has to be a demo, right? Okay. Sign in. Yes, that's better. So I'm logging in and there I can see my links, for example, links that I have done before. And when it says available, they have been accepted, these ones. Uh, okay, back to the presentation. And there is also a log, which is publicly visible. So uh, you can see the added links. And, and remember that whenever you do something, there's always permission asked in the final stage. So you, you will not, uh, you know, by mistake, link, link something. You'll be, make, make, you know, you will see the summary and then make sure you'll be, you'll be able to confirm. Uh, this log, there are many logs here. If you go in resources and help, uh, there's web statistics and activity logs. And there you have web statistics about uh, people visiting the national monitor. Uh, there's open org logs for uh, people uh, that are registered, that are disambiguating the organizations uh, in Ireland. And, and these are the monitor logs. So you can download uh, a log and let me bring up. This is a text file, which is anonymized. Uh, let me get it. So, for example, here, I don't know if you can see that, the, it mentions some authors that uh, linked to their ORCID or removed a product, uh, and somebody uploaded 100 uh, DOIs. So, um, uh, these, you can access these things here. In, additionally, uh, in addition, primary dashboard managers uh, will be able to upload a set of PIDs uh, from research products to associate with their RFO. So uh, linking bulk, which is what, what I was saying before. Uh, at the moment, well, I'll, 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 say, that, I'll say that after I, I talk about how uh, funders are indexed in open air. Uh, so I'll come back to that. Okay, this is just so that we have in the slides the linking process. So specifically for RFOs, so funders uh, need, in order to appear in the monitor, they need to be indexed in the open air graph. 
Uh, the standard way of doing that um, up to recently was that uh, funders would directly join open air, uh, which meant that they will pro would provide their their funding data, basically a list of metadata. Many times this will be just an Excel file. Other times it will be through an API. Um, and then we would develop a tailored text mining algorithm uh, to enhance the the products uh, the the links we get from the all the uh, links all, all the inputs we aggregate in the graph, so uh, to improve the coverage basically, and then this will be shown to the funder to make sure that they agree. Everything will be validated, um, and the all the links produced will be at the project level, so the funder will be able to see specific projects statistics for specific projects and what the information uh, for each project that the graph uh, contains, not just for the funder in general. So not publications per funder, but publications per specific project, uh, specific funding streams and things like that. Now, for the Irish Monitor, uh, um, till now we had to get all the Irish funders. So this was done through the Open Funder Registry, which is another uh, avenue for representing funders in the open air graph. Um, so in this case, uh, all fun it allows funders to be associated with publications via valid DOIs in the graph. But uh, most funders in Crossref do not have their projects registered. Some have, but some haven't. Uh, for the Irish ones, when we uh, checked last time, none had registered their projects. So we could only have funder publication links. So a funder linked to a publication, not publication linked to a funder, but not to the project. Uh, so a text mining module cannot be built uh, to enhance um, the results. Uh, there is one exception, which I'll explain in, the, in, in a minute, is what we call is mining for an identi unidentified project because uh, projects are a main entity of the open air graph. It's not just the funder, it's actually their projects. So with funders without projects, we call, we have an entity called unidentified project and we link with that. So this is in practical terms is linking to the funder. Uh, there is no granularity, uh, the same granularity that we have with the direct integration. And also the quality is not guaranteed is what we get from the all the information we aggregate. Um, there is no uh, the curation that we do, you know, while we develop our own text mining algorithm with the funder. Uh, so just some numbers for the Irish fund funders. So we had 157 Irish RFOs that were found in open uh, funder registry. And we also had a funder via the direct route that would already register in, in open air is SFI. I'll talk about them in a minute. Um, but uh, Crossref had some uh, mistakes or issues or some things we had to take into account. For example, there was a UK funder wrongly associated with Ireland, uh, which we removed. Uh, there was two entries for one funder. It's the same funder, but it had they had two funder IDs. So we merge into one because we want to have one dashboard for the results. And there's three entries for another funder with two different names. This is not a mistake, actually. It's, uh, it's specifically it's for uh, um, IRC because before it was there was IRC, there was uh, Irish Research Council for Science, Engineering, and Technology, and also Irish Research Council for the Humanities and the Social Sciences that were merged into the Irish uh, Research Council. So these actually now appear in the dashboard as three different entities, but they should be one and they will be merged in the, in the next update. Um, and at the moment we have 156 monitors. So with the merge, we will have 154. Uh, 144 of those uh, have publications at the moment. Um, so this is a view of the the funders. Uh, we'll see it in, in the demo. I just want to talk about uh, the Science Foundation Ireland uh, funder that has the most publications at the moment. Uh, that's also probably, be, apart from being uh, a very large funder, is also that uh, they had joined Open Air since 2015. So we have all their project data and we've been mining the information for a long time. Uh, and the projects are available on their website and we directly get it from uh, the SFI Open Data site. 
uh, and occasionally directly from SFI when uh, actually in November we got it before SFI updated on the website so that uh, the the monitor will be um, will have the latest information. Um, so we wanted to attempt to do the unidentified project mining for um, for our funders. So we started with the Irish Research Council. Um, so what we do there is the mine text. We mine the text of publication instead of looking for specific uh, projects that we don't have. We didn't have a list. We would look for the name, but we'll use clever text mining techniques so we don't uh, uh, mistake with any mention of Irish Research Council that talks about uh, you know some report that they've created that it's, but it when it's all, uh, only about a funding attribution. Um, by looking at this while developing this module, we saw that. Uh, Project numbers were clearly stated. Uh, so if we, if there's anybody from Iris Research Council in this call, that would be good to talk, because if we had your project data, then we would have a near perfect accuracy, uh, because we'd be looking for these kind of entities uh, that, rather than that. Even though I think we've reached a very high uh, accuracy, and this has been added to the monitor. So since the last update, uh, we've really increased the coverage of the RC publications. But we're good to talk also with the funder too, because it didn't go through the proper uh, uh, way of getting the project data and then validating with the funder. It was just a, for us trying to enhance the information that you see in the monitors. And now we're doing the same for the health research board. Um, so just to give you some more information there, because I have that more recent. So there it was a bit more difficult because when you're looking for health research board, you, there are many health research boards in the world. So there is, uh, you know, another funder in the US, which is called Commonwealth Research Health Research Board. There is a, a public health research board in the National Institute of Health Research in England and so on and so forth. So these are eliminated um, via their money. Our mining, and we also use the context near the wherever we see health research board, as I said before, to make sure that we're talking about funding. Uh, the the algorithm went through two iterations with manual creation of results. We created the results, and at least in our test, we think we have a, a very high precision accuracy. But we can talk with the health research board as well. Um, again, if we have the projects, this will be a much easier uh, job. So this will appear in the next graph update. And uh, there, hopefully, you will see from 3,000 to increase that number, uh, at least by 2,000K, uh, from what I see, from what we see. And how do we know we're doing it right? Well, we have actually gone through manually a lot of these links, so it took a lot of effort. Um, so here is a publication shown in the, uh, just an example in the National Monitor, which you can find now. But the moment is shown as funded by the UCRI in the UK and IRC, because we have, uh, we developed the money for the IRC. But if you look at the text, which you can find from the monitor, you will see that it's also funded by HRB. And here is an example of the snippet. So in the funding statement, Yes, there is the UKRI and uh, uh, the Irish Research Council uh, funding information, but it's also funded by the Health Research Board. So this was missed by Crossref or from our aggregators, uh, uh, whereas this text mining would improve that. So even the unidentified mining that we, we can do uh, will improve the results. Even here, the, the mining looks at all the paper and it, it finds another mention of Health Research Board, which is for competing interests, but yet it still confirms, it says reports, uh, this person uh, received financial support uh, from Health Research Board. So this uh, helps the mining understand that we definitely uh, have a publication mined by HRB. Uh, so uh, about uh, primary dashboard managers. Okay, before I go there, let me go to the platform actually, and then show some general things which are available to everybody, uh, even without logging in there. So I could log out, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'll, I will use that later. So I think by now you sh you might have seen this is the 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 front page with some general information. In every uh, uh, section, there is this help button where you can. Uh, get some information. There's a video showing the basic interactivity uh, for the indicators. Uh, it, it takes you to the terminology and construction page, which has the entities uh, mentioned here, the inherited and inferred attributes, things like um, 
article processing charges and there's information for each of these. Uh, and they constructed articles, uh, like for, the, for example, the journal business models. All these also can also be found from the resources and help. So there is, they're, they're in that section. So, um, ah, and also from here, you can give us feedback and actually reach out for anything that you see, uh, some error you spotted or some information you want, or you want to join or, or uh, whatever you, we respond within 24 hours. And some of your um, requests might take a while to, to sort out, but uh, at least you will get a reply quickly to uh, discuss the issue. Uh, there's a national monitor that uh, you've seen in, in previous presentations. Uh, the RPOs and the RFOs. I'm going to focus on the research funding organizations. So this is a general view where you can see all the organizations per page. They're, you can list them, in, you can group them. Here they're listed by number of publications. They could be alphabetical or, or uh, you can also search, I don't know. Oops, sorry. So I wanted uh, Allergan and uh, I could find them quickly. Uh, there's a, a list view as well with numbers, like a table. Um, and uh, from there, we can go uh, to Science Foundation Ireland, since uh, uh, it has also the text mining. And as all the monitors, uh, it has the two parts. So the, the section with the indicators and a section of browsing the research products. The indicator sections is, uh, has different themes. Uh, so there's scholar production, access rights, open access routes, indicators about fairness, plan S, APCs, the cross RFO I mentioned before, and the academic impact. We'll have a, a quick view. I'm not going to go through all the graphs here. Uh, some have been shown in the RPO training, in the introduction of the National Monitor, they're, they're similar. Uh, and uh, so what you see is some numbers, for example, here, the number of publications associated to SFI. Uh, the peer review publications and the open access peer review publications with license. Um, and then you get uh, different indicators in graph form. So here is the publication trends where you can interact. You might want to see only the peer reviewed publications. You can see the numbers there. Uh, so many of the graphs have this interactivity. Uh, there's also this tooltip where you can view the graph in full screen, print the chart, download in different formats. If you download an SVG, you also have the interactivity. You can also download as an Excel or CSV file. You can view the data table here. So if I click that and, and, and go down, I can see the, the, the numbers also here apart from on here, which is also useful. Hide it now. And you can also filter. There's different filters. So I might be interested not in everything for SFI, but uh, I don't know, the last five years, publicly funded and health sciences. So only these papers. Uh, so these get updated and also the filters can be changed from there. So, uh, and everything updates interactively. Also there is this embed where you can get uh, this iframe code to add on your, uh, your website. And whenever uh, there's a graph update and the graph updates, it will also update dynamically uh, on your site. Um, so there's things like uh, peer-reviewed publications by field of science, uh, by field of science that was level one, level one and two, by sustainable development goals categories. So see many on the good health uh, section. Another thing here you can do, you can also uh, zoom by dragging the mouse there. And so you can get some things that you cannot see. I reset. This is again explained here. Um, if you forget. Um, there's peer review publications by type, so articles, books, and things like that, re reports by uh, top publishers for the peer review publications, by RPOs, uh, by data source type, so most of our journals, publication reports, and so on and so forth, and top data sources, so we see here Euro PubMed for SFI, top grants, and top grants by total amount founders. So this you will not have if you don't have your projects uh, uh, in in the project in integrated. Um, and there's other sections. Then there's for access rights. Uh, 
again, they're very similar. I'm not going to go through all of these. We can discuss uh, specific indicators uh, when needed. Uh, I just want to show that in some sections, let's see, like open access rules. Okay, there might be additional information in some of, uh, so this is green with license or gold or hybrid. This is what we call immediate open access peer-reviewed publications. And you might get uh, different tabs here to see different views. So here will be the open access types. Uh, so green, gold, and hybrid. So the indicators uh, for this category. There's fairness indicators. Uh, again, they're based on licenses. This is the main, the first uh, section, but also there are other uh, fair aspects. For example, if they have PIDs, uh, PIDs over time. And so now we see most of them have uh, DOIs, so some PubMed IDs and things like that. Um, information about uh, Plan S compliance indicators, uh, article processing charges, AP APCs. So again, they could be uh, APCs versus transformative uh, agreement. Um, and uh, this is the cross RFO uh, I mentioned at the beginning. So here, your uh, institution, the, the SFI is all, will, in this case, it's SFI will be shown first. Uh, and then the others, even if the information is less, it happens to be more here for the peer reviewed publication. Again, you can zoom to see more information or view the data table or download to get, uh, oops, sorry, I didn't, uh, didn't want to do that. Um, and reset to go back. Right. And many views for different things. And academic impact, and there's two types of impact at the moment. There is a, a measure by citations, so total citations of peer-reviewed publications by exercise over time, for example. Again, you can check for different things. Uh, and uh, via downloads, so the average for example, downloads per peer review publication over time based on year of download. And here it's based on year of publication. So those these things you can do here. And uh, this is always something to remember. So resources and help uh, provides all general information about uh, the, the dashboard. Uh, it talks about the five monitors where again here you can go to your section. I'm an RFO and I haven't joined. I want to see... I mean, I see a dashboard, um, I have a dashboard, but uh, there's information missing, what's happening there. Maybe there you, you realize you have to provide data for your projects that will help increase the coverage. So the steps are clearly uh, shown here. Again, there's always the help to get in touch with us. Um, there's a section on what the user can perform, which is add research products uh, via your, your ORCID ID link research products, which is the link I showed you before, or upload DOIs. Um, at the moment, the DOIs uh, cannot, uh, are limited to the number of DOIs you can upload uh, when it comes to linking to your project. To, but uh, you can, if you go here and upload DOIs, you can upload um, DOIs to check uh, some information. Let me run a test. Let's see now if this is going to work for uh, IRL, for example, I will upload uh, a bunch of DOIs that have not been linked yet with uh, they're from the transformative agreement file, but then I can see their title, if they're available or not, uh, and different access routes and get some information. So you can upload DOIs and get information uh, from the graph uh, based on, on the DOIs you have. Okay, let me continue the presentation and have a couple of slides only for the primary dashboard managers. So what's the additional functionalities they have? Oh, and, and kind of not only function, but things uh, that they will be good to, go, to do. For example, I think the most important thing will be for primary dashboard managers for funders to provide their project data. So how do we do that? There's a help button that we showed in every section. So if you just contact us and say, you know, I want to give you the data, how do I do it? Then we'll uh, get in touch with you. And uh, but so that you know, there is uh, different ways. One is via standard spreadsheet. And this can be described in this page. I'll show you that page in a minute. 
Um, so it's just a list of the projects with metadata and you can have the minimal uh, information. The, the most important for the funding is the actual, you know, the grant code, the, the project ID, uh, maybe start end date. But again, if you don't, if they don't have end dates because they get updated, it's okay. If they don't have titles, it is okay. If they have acronyms, that's okay. So we're very flexible on the information we get, but the more information we have, the better the, the results we can provide. Or you might have an API or that already provides. Many funders have APIs that uh, we get. We Then you don't need to bother. We get uh, the API and uh, we access it very frequently if needed. So with some funders, we do it every week if they update their projects so, so frequently. Uh, or a website like SFI uh, did. So we can just get the information from the files uh, provided in the uh, website. It could be... Um, uh, of your institution or our government open data site. Um, and, um, or another way is uh, to register your products with op uh, with uh, Crossref, with Open Fund, Fund Register, and then tell us that they are there and then we will pick them from there directly. So very, very few funders have done that. And uh, as far as I know, none of the Irish ones at the moment. Uh, but eventually that will be another way of doing it. So then you provide the data only to one source, which will be to OFR. And then we can also use the same information and they're compatible with the data we need. So the uh, how to join page, let me just briefly show that. Uh, it's in, in Opener. It gives some information of the options that you have, some examples of the data that are needed, the mandatory and the optional. Again, uh, no need to be scared. Mandatory, even that is not mandatory. What is really important is the project identifier and probably a title. Even if you don't have dates, uh, we can still provide indicators uh, which are useful to the project level. But you know, if you want overtime, then for example, dates will be important. And there is optional information you know, that uh, would allow to provide more info, more more details, more granularity. Uh, there's a detailed file we can you can link at the bottom of the page. Uh, you can get it from the link, and it provides details of any possible. Um, metadata you can provide. So this is a lot of information. This is not needed for you to provide all that with explanations below, but uh, please get in touch with us for, for help. Uh, it's it's quite simple. Uh, if that is very clear also from integration steps, somebody can just use the condom form and actually upload the file and accept the the the, the data policy and that's it. And, and, and we will get it. Um, okay, so... Back to the presentation. Right. So additionally, because uh, uh, if we have the projects and then we develop a project uh, the mining algorithm dedicated to you, then we'll, it will be great if we have suggested project acknowledgement statements. So we, we know what to expect. Some funders uh, have specific statements they want us to look for, but that's okay. We're quite flexible. Um, we look for any variations and even misprints and things like that. For example, the, uh, the welcome trust. Many people write it with one L, one two Ls. We've, you know, we we understand that this is a common error, and we we look for things like that. So it's it's quite um, uh, flexible. Um, another thing that uh, you can do is you can add, uh, invite, basically, or delete managers to the dashboard. Uh, and the managers can have access to the sandbox, so you can see the new updates that come before they're released, the new indicators, and you can check quality everything before they're uh, released and they're made public. I'll show you the section for the managers in a minute. So how do you access your admin account? Uh, okay, so here I will use a different account because here I'm a super user and I have access to everybody. But if I go, this is another account which I pretend I'm the manager of only one funder. So if I go here and see manage profiles, so I go to my initials and manage profiles. Ah, I need to sign it because it expired. And this happens. So, so I see only one profile. So I have access here to the Irish Research Council. So if I go there, what can I do? Uh, well, as a slide will say, uh, well, there's a few things you can do. The add delete managers and change the display name. You might want to include a shorter or longer display name or an acronym for your funder. Uh, the locale, the description, and also upload a logo or uh, 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 provide a link to the logo if this is uh, frequently changed for some reason. Um, so you can see here, 
you can edit the name of the founder. Some things you cannot edit because they are part of the graph. Change the locale, English, Europe. You can add a description uh, for your organization, uh, link a logo. And this is the user sections section where now I'm only here logged in myself, but then you could invite the manager, which is as simple as uh, give, writing their email and they will receive uh, a link uh, with um, an email with a link uh, to join and uh, a security code. And if you send the invitation, there will be pending managers there waiting. Uh, if they when they approve them, they will be a uh, once they've gone through the verification process, they will appear here as managers. So this is this about the primary dashboard managers. Okay, so and I'll uh, conclude here with some just uh, summarize the next steps. So basically, use the contact us the help desk uh, form for anything that you see that uh, you like or don't like or something that is missing uh, so because we we'll, you know, this will uh, the final uh, release of the dashboard will be in in June uh, by which time well actually you will be able to uh, assess it for another month but uh, you know the sooner we find uh, problems or issues and we deal with them uh, promptly, the better the information that everybody gets uh, uh, will be. Um, and uh, also, please get in touch with us to integrate your projects if you want to increase the coverage. Sometimes with funders, we even double the amount of publications that are actually linked to you because the publications are in the national monitor, but they are not uh, uh, linked uh, to the funder. And this, the sooner the better, because um, it takes some time to develop an algorithm. For it might take a week to test the first version, then a week to get back to you, and but then we have to wait for the next month update. So we're talking for at least a month until you get uh, the results in the, in the in the dashboard. And uh, you can also use the linking functionality to link uh, products uh, that you have. But here I'm going to say that uh, it wouldn't work at the moment. And again, this is um, uh, something we'll fix. But uh, the linking functionality was uh, provided with the assumption that we will have the project data. So when you link, uh, you get your publication and you link it to a project. If you want to link it to an unidentified, because it's always via project, and you type unidentified, you will get all the unidentified projects of all the 150 whatever funders. And it will be difficult to go and check. So we'll we'll change that so you can link with by funder. And also the when the uh, linking by DOIs uh, will be done, you'll be able to link uh, you know in bulk. Uh, but again, if we had the projects, this will be you'll be able to. Uh, so SFI can use that linking functionality without any problem at the moment. Uh, researchers can use their Orchid ID to link to their own their own data. Uh, but uh, for funders, this is uh, limited, but we fix uh, very promptly. Uh, you can also get in touch with me. It's Harry D at Athena Arc, uh, Arithena Research Center, sorry, dot gr. Uh, and obviously, the best way I think is via the contact uh, forms. So I'll stop here uh, to see if we can get any questions and if there is uh, any funder that I mentioned and want to. Wants... Oh, there might be some questions. Okay. Yes, there are. Two questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, one is uh, uh, if the monitor is including also books and uh, book chapters. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, sorry. Actually, this reminds me. Let me go back. I didn't show you one thing. Oops. Uh, and one thing I wanted to show was I didn't show you the browse. So thank you for the question because that reminds me of. Uh, so when we go to the monitors, like I went here to SFI. Uh, we had the browser search products. I, this has been shown in other webinars, but I'll, I'll better show it for you here too. So here you will see uh, the different, uh, what, what feeds the dashboard. So um, at the moment, some things are pre-selected. There's many filters uh, here on the left. So we have here publications, research data, software, and stuff like that. And from here, you can see there is document type. So you can have, there's also view all, so we can search for different categories. But there's one that sums the show. You can see here you have part of book or chapter. There's books, preprints, conference objects, articles. So there's different categories. Other things you can uh, do here is uh, see if they're peer reviewed or not. So select there. The different open access, you know, uh, status, closed access, restricted embargo. Does it have a license or not? Um, 
gold brought the different uh, publisher access uh, is it green open eyes so the different filters you can and then you know you can also clear or reset you will see the filters yet you selected they are there um you might also want to i don't know uh, select by field of science uh country founder let me explain also this here so i'm in sfi so why am i seeing uh, you know irish research council is because some are co-funded so they will have mentioned uh, both uh, uh, both funders, the sources. So you might just want to check for the archive, archive prints only. And here, when you get when you have the the list, um, you will be able to go to a publication. You know, there's a lot of information provided even here. You can claim with your ID record if it's uh, if it's yours. Uh, you can get the full text if we have it available. If it's open access, you can see the different routes. But also you can click on its page and get a, get additional information. Uh, yes. Okay. So here is this one has full text. You can see the organizations involved. Um, so this one has different. It came from different three versions. So uh, your PubMed. Uh, you can see the versions that we got and the old information. The different licenses for each of them. And more details are actually found here. So PubMed from Crossref. Uh, from core um, you also get uh, if there is a DOI the MID uh, different uh, our handle you will get information there you can actually link and go to visit the, the landing page you get some stats here provided by uh, uh, BIP and uh, so and, and our other services like uh, the citations the popularity the influence the impulse different scores there uh, the fields of science it's been assigned to. Uh, you might disagree. Again, perfect. You can suggest. You can go there and say, well, I think it's something else. Um, and this will be uh, taken into account, account by the uh, text and data mining team. Uh, you can see subjects, uh, the references, and there's the metrics I mentioned before. So there's, uh, there's this part here. Oh, and from here also, you can go to the link and you want to link this specific paper to something. You can share it uh, via social me media and find how to cite it. Uh, so, okay, sorry for this, uh, but this reminded me I had forgotten to uh, show you this. So the question was about uh, books and book chapters. So yes, in theory, we should have that. If they're missing, uh, please let us know. And let me go to the second question. And the key application from sorry is linked to our should appear on our organization dashboards. Okay, this does not appear to have been done yet. Is it in progress or will we have? Uh, it definitely is in progress. But if you uh, please reach out to make sure, uh, is uh, are you? Uh, so this is to from Jennifer Brennan. Um, I'm I'm not sure why this hasn't happened. Uh, can you tell me what which organization? I can make a note and check with the team. Hi, Harry. If... Thanks. Hi. Um, yeah, Hi. so I'm from the Department of the Environment, Climate and Communications. Okay. And um, we should be linked to the Environmental Protection Agency, Geological Survey Ireland and the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. Okay. Um, so looking now at the moment, it seems when I look at my dashboard, I'm seeing 24 publications that specifically mention my department as a funder, but we should also be seeing the ones for EPA, SAI and GSI. Okay, so I made a note of that. So I'll check, uh, yeah. you know, with the team. So get back with you. I'm I'm sure uh, it's 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 in the process. Uh, for example, I know for IRL we have uh, the their dashboard is uh, there's a lot of things missing which has been provided, and we're it's because the functionality is not they cannot link it themselves. We have to do it, and it will be in the next graph update. There's uh, about six thousand publications from the transformative agreement that we're uploading. So I know many things are in the pro in process. Uh, which yeah, of course, will... that's why I wanted to ask, because I know it's just a pilot version and it, it, it may just be that it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, so. yeah. But uh, uh, thank you for... Uh, thank you. Uh, I made a note to make sure to we, you know, we'll get back to you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, what else? Are there any other questions? I think we might mention that there will be some other webinars coming up. Uh, 
There is for APCs is uh, one which will be scheduled in a couple of uh, uh, months and uh, you should receive an invitation. And uh, I think on that, but that's for RPOs, probably the Open Orgs uh, uh, webinar for disambiguating organizations. But yes. some of you are also funders and and uh, you both have RPOs and RFO uh, monitors. Um, so maybe some of them, uh, some of you join also the Open Orgs uh, webinar. Yes, thank you, um, Harry. Uh, I don't know if uh, you want to show uh, to the funders also an example of uh, an Excel file they can send to you. Okay, in in the how to join page, actually, you well, it's not a filled in example, but you can, yeah, I can, I can, if you want. Let me show you something that is already there, uh, which is, for example, SF file. Let me see. Okay, so to search. Uh, oops. Okay. Do that here. Okay. So, okay. So let me. I'm opening a file which I'm going to show you in a minute. This. Let me. I'm downloading it. Okay, right, let me maximize. Uh, are you still seeing my screen or not? Yes, and okay. we can see the Excel file. Okay, now it's, it's a bit small, let me maximize a bit. So, but this is SFI, which provides a lot of information. You don't need it to make it that detailed. But uh, so for example, there is the ID number, there's a program name, there's sub program name. This is how SFI has their data. Um, supplement is the lead applicant. This we don't actually use in open air, by the way. I shouldn't be showing that here. Uh, there's ORCID IDs, uh, research body. Uh, okay, the funder name, obviously, the crosser funder. So sometimes, I mean, all that you need is the the ID, the grant number that we will search for the mining, the or the way you want to be represented in the graph, the um the title, if there is a title or an acronym, like the EC uh, projects have both title or acronyms. And here we have also start and end date. Uh, no need to provide uh, financial data. If you do, you do. There will be indicators for that as well. So, but also if you go into the, we will get rid. If we go by in the, this page again, uh, here, this is the best join opener, sorry. This file. So this one describes the fields that can be available. And at the bottom, it basically gives an uh, an example of the some of the headings and also say, I mean, you might have multiple organizations involved with different projects or different amounts. They can be, they have to be for each project, you have to have uh, one line. That's the only constraint. Uh, and you could have zero, which means you don't need to provide it, or to one. So you need the code for sure, the, the unique identifier for the project. Um, but, you know, you might have a, an acronym in zero or one. Or if there's more than there's other numbers, that means you can provide more. So there's an ID of an organization. There might be many organizations involved. Uh, but in most, time, in most cases, it's... Uh, for the, I mean, to be honest with you, for the funding, just a list of the project identifiers is enough, uh, even without the other information. So, in despite here saying that it needs more information, uh, and I think most funders have a system where they have all the information and they can just export that easily. Uh, some funders do not have uh, um, uh, projects in the sense that we want them here. So, for example, in open air, we had uh, we have uh, Canadian funders that. Uh, Although they do have their contract numbers, the agreements, uh, they most of the, they know that their um, their researchers do not refer to them. They would say funded by you know uh, by CIHR or whatever. So in which case we developed an unidentified project mining specifically for them. But because they told us 
uh, the type of statements we and the different names that are used because in propaganda we have also French. Uh, so there's different things we're looking for. The the mining was developed in conjunction with their help, and that was for for their port. Um, so again, there's things that can that can be done. As, uh, for example, for IRL, uh, I, I think there is a statement uh, I've seen that we can mine for quite easily. It's very most cases we see it very clearly stated but without a project uh, shown next to it. So again, we could do develop uh, a module for that to increase um, the coverage. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is if you want information about the graph at the bottom of the, each page in the monitor, you can you know click graph and it takes you to, the, uh, you know, for anybody interested in going into more detail, you can see the number updating there of how, pro how many products we have and you can dive deeper into the stats. Uh, of the numbers that, that are there. There's a uh, full documentation page, uh, pages for, for things, which this is an update to our graph page. And there's also a user forum where you can join and ask questions which have to do specifically with data. That might not be necessarily for the Irish, but for the open air data. So there's a, a forum that is available with different sections. Uh, I think that uh, that's all I wanted to cover. Thank you, Harry. Uh, okay, so stay tuned for uh, the next uh, uh, webinar and meetings. Um, let us know if you have any questions and if uh, you would like to uh, send more information. So Thank thanks again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.